Oh, hello everybody, and welcome, uh, hello all newcomers, and welcome back to my fellow attorneys. As always, it's Emperor AP. Today I wanted to talk about a topic that actually comes from some of our previous uh, live streams. Our last live stream we did talk about technology, we rebuilt a transformer, we actually didn't finish it's still a project that we're working on but during that I asked you guys some really important questions I wanted to know what kind of content you guys wanted to see in the future so I took a number of suggestions and we got some great feedback um, we got like four or five suggestions every single one of them was an absolute banger uh, I wrote every single one of your uh, your suggestions down and so we got a, a solid few of them to work with and um, I'm excited to talk about one in particular uh, as well. I want to see if I can't go ahead and share this real quick before we get too, too far going. So real, I hope everybody's doing well. I see we have one viewer. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us this morning. It's early in the morning, so I get that we don't have a ton of people. But I thought this topic was really important. As you can see, the title is Mental Health and Micronations. Um, I really wanted to talk about this topic because a ton of people I see in the community having difficulty with this. It's not something that's talked about a lot, but um, the micronationalism is really, really tough. You are trying to get support for an idea that you believe in. You're trying to get people to understand where you're coming from with something that may be different than anybody around you has ever heard of. So it's a really, really important topic to discuss what someone's internal dialogue feels like, what, you know, uh, we as individuals in the micronational community, whether you're the leader of a micronation, you're pushing for this great cause and you're trying to get all this support, or whether you're an individual who's trying to get people to understand uh, the way that you view the world, and, you know, if you're a supporter of a micronation. So that all being the case, uh, I felt like I have seen a ton of micronations fall off because they feel like, you know, uh, there, there are a lot of problems with the community, you know, people being toxic, people hurting people. Um, but at the end of the day, I think all of it kind of gets summed, summed up in mental health. I think that's a really, really good blanket statement to try and cover. And so uh, today, instead of focusing on other people and focusing on uh, how other people should try and figure things out and solve things, I figured we should focus on the internal of a person. Uh, Shane Willard jumped in and said, Emperor AP, hey Shane Willard, it's good to see you, how are you? Utrain Empire says, hi, hey, how are you Train Empire? Um, so I wrote down a list of 10 things that I think are important for micronationalists to remember um, when dealing with uh, their, uh, their positions and uh, dealing with the community and their own mental health. So these are things that uh, I wish I would have uh, thought of and had somebody talk to me about when I was first starting out and things that I've just kind of learned over the years uh, for how to develop this myself. Uh, people uh, asked for this uh, specifically under the name like um, work-life balance in micronationalism and stuff and I can go into that specifically in more detail at some point like a, uh, a stream based around uh, talking about like my morning routine and you know uh, how I schedule things and plan things but I feel like uh, specifically for a lot of people who are going to fall off, who are going to, you know, be struggling with this and all of a sudden hit a breaking point and feel like, oh, I can't do this anymore. This is something that's a, a bit more pressing and a bit more important and it still hits on the topic. So uh, my list of 10 things uh, for micronationalists and mental health. Um, first, remember why you started. Um, this one is big for me because I feel like it is important for all of us to look back at the thing that got us so excited about micronationalism. Whether that is the actual reason that you may have started a nation, or whether that's just the thing that you got excited about when you saw another person's micronation, or when you learned about micronationalism, it is a huge deal to remember that feeling. For a lot of people, it's this big excitement. I know for me especially, realizing the idea that other people were going out and pursuing something completely unique, trying to do something different, trying to go against the current and against the status quo is huge for me. And so whenever I uh, initially started Eternia and wanted to do that, I wanted to make a home for myself and for other people, particularly people who felt like they didn't have one, particularly people who felt like they couldn't afford some of the things that would give them a comfortable life. 
And so remembering why you started your micronation, remembering why you started becoming a micronationalist, why you became interested in the community is huge. Um, so remembering why you started is, is crucial. If you can do that, I feel like it helps you every day to kind of reinforce this idea that, you know, you're only so far along, you're, you're getting closer to that goal, you're, you're building and, and getting to the things that you want to achieve, because a lot of the time we lose sight of that, and I think that's one of the quickest ways for people to fall off, and one of the quickest ways uh, to discourage yourself from continuing to grow, because a lot of the time we think, you know, we need to achieve everything right away, we need to grow everything right away, but at the end of the day, remembering what it is that you started with, remembering why you are so, um, uh, why you are so passionate about this, is crucial to getting up every day and feeling happy and feeling supported. Um, particularly this morning, I woke up uh, and I felt really happy and I felt really lucky. Uh, so I was uh, absolutely. Um, it, feeling like this was a great topic to cover today. Um, Maximo says, uh, greetings everyone, greetings, Emperor. greetings Maximo, I hope you're doing well today and thank you so much for watching and hanging out with us. Uh, Shane Willard says, AP, I'm going to get my EMT sir, hey congratulations. Uh, and yes, I would love for there to be an EMT in Eternia. Uh, Maximo says, what is EMT? Uh, emergency medical technician, so somebody who like rides around in an ambulance and like helps people in emergencies. Um, Going on to number two, though, I feel like we've spent a, a little bit of time here on uh, remembering why you started. Uh, the second one is surround yourself with loved ones. Uh, this has been particularly important for me. When you are looking at your experience in micronationalism or really in anything that you are pushing for, especially something stressful, remembering to keep family and friends close, people who know why you started, uh, going back to number one, people who know your passion for it, and also know you outside of it is super, super important. A lot of the time, micronationalists, I think when they get into micronationalism, really may push away from their friends and family and really cling to the community as a base of support because they're looking for other people who, uh, I should say we are looking for other people who are trying to do the same things and who get us, who understand what it is that we're trying to do. So I think a lot of the time we hesitate to talk to family and friends about things that are happening. Um, we hesitate to um, really express how we're feeling to people in the micronational community uh, about stresses that we're dealing with in micronationalism. And so in all of those things, it's really important to keep family and friends around because they can give you that perspective. Uh, there's nobody that knows you like your family and friends. And at the end of the day, those are the people who are really going to stick with you. Um, as you continue to develop your micronation, of course people are going to cheer for your successes, but when things aren't so great, when things are slow, when things uh, maybe take a negative turn, when things get too difficult sometimes, those are going to be the people who really help to give your life perspective, who you can still have fun with and enjoy things with without micronationalism. Um, or it, I should even say uh, with slow periods, because as micronationalists, we are always kind of in this mindset. We are always pushing toward our goal. We're always wanting to do that, but I guess I mean without a steady work day, without having some constant, you know, grind that you're on. At a certain point, if you need to slow down, if you need to, to take a breather, having people who are around you and who are supporting you is absolutely important. Um, and so the, the third thing that I wanted to talk about uh, following up on this is be open to change. So we talked about remembering why you started and knowing why that's so important. We also talked about uh, surrounding yourself with your loved ones. So you're, you can focus in on, you know, this is what's important to me. I know this is who I am. I know uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is why I started this. This is why I became the person that I am. Um, and these are the people who care about me. That's a strong baseline. 
but above that, there are all of these stressors that, that occur in the micronational community, whether it's, you know, drama stuff that happens, uh, toxicity between micronations, you know, people doing things like, you know, raiding servers and hacking people and all these really, really rough things that can just hit somebody kind of out of the blue. And then there are even these just little small daily things that get to you, you know, having to keep up with schedules, having to make sure that uh, your nation is continually growing, trying to meet deadlines, trying to meet goals, trying to do all of these things, uh, compete with other people potentially for different goals and different aspirations that you have in the community. All of that um, really, really hones in on the fact that nothing is going to work out the way that you want it to. Um, not to say that you can't achieve things, and not to say that you can't achieve a lot, but at the end of the day, you have to sit back and think about what it is that is important to you, and uh, what else can kind of change and be adapted and be okay. So remembering why you started really ties into this one, because you have some core goal or core belief that you're pushing for. And so when you stay true to that core belief, other things can shift, and other things can change, and that can be all right. You don't have to be perfectly going along this cookie cutter path in order to make sure that your nation is successful, or in order to define success for yourself, or in order to um, achieve anything. You know, there are a million ways to the same place, and so that being the case, I think as micronationalists, we should really be open to change, especially when it comes to our own well-being and our own thought processes. Because uh, as micro-nationalists, we, we really see those goal after goal after goal. We really have this mindset of, well, I have to keep achieving, I have to keep going, I have to keep growing, I have to keep pushing. What am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? Um, and we overanalyze a lot of stuff. So instead of focusing on all that, and instead of constantly trying to worry and stress it out, is everything going according to plan? I think a lot of the time we should focus on knowing what's most important and then being accepting of change in all other places. Um, but that being the case, that kind of leads into another topic that I feel is, is really important. And that is um, setting reasonable goals. We have talked in the past about goal setting. We've talked in the past about uh, what is so uh, unique about being a micronationalist and that you're constantly uh, on this grind, you're constantly waking up every day and going to sleep and, and, and living throughout your days, weeks, you know, weekends when you get free, whenever it is that you work on micronationalism and you continue to develop it, um, you are constantly trying to shoot for the moon. I see a ton of micronationalists quite literally saying things like, oh, we're going to have a space program in five years. Oh, we're, gonna, uh, we're going to be uh, seasteading in five years. Oh, we're going to be doing this and this and this. Uh, and naming these really large, intense country or whatever um, really, really quickly. And I think that those things are important. It's always important to have your big goals. It's always important to know where you see yourself in a certain amount of time. But at the end of the day, really focusing in on what short-term realistic goals are is going to be much more valuable to you than constantly feeling like you're not achieving that big, big pie in the sky goal that you have. Because as time continues, things are going to change. Things are going to be different for you. And whenever you see that difference occurring, when you feel like things aren't going your way, it can get really, really discouraging if you have this one big goal that you keep shooting for that you feel like you're always falling short of. But if you can break up that big goal into many smaller goals, some little daily achievements, some little weekly aspiration, that can make all the difference. Also, I wanted to tell you guys, thank you for liking. We have two viewers, two likes. We've matched up the like ratio, uh, and that means a lot to me. Uh, you guys are really, uh, really showing some, some care and some support for a topic that I think isn't something that's going to become super popular. I don't think, you know, a million people are going to watch this video, but I think they should. Um, not enough YouTubers in general, uh, business people, whatever, talk about uh, mental health and, uh, and what's so important about that, but especially dealing in the micronational community, everybody wants to pose this idea of perfect success and of, um, 
of being absolutely, um, absolutely locked into the, um, um, being absolutely locked into the, uh, the most ideal version, whatever they're presenting on social media or whatever, uh, of themselves. And so it is really, really important, I feel, that we talk about micronationalism uh, micro and mental health specifically for those people, specifically for people who are saying it's all or nothing, uh, it's, you know, uh, it's my micronation or bust. And so when we see that and we uh, learn about how we treat ourselves in the micronational community, we can really understand what it means to say that and we can really understand how much stress that it can cause somebody uh, to develop in that way. And so, uh, especially early on in my micronational career and in trying to pursue the development of Eternia, I know that has always been a big thing. Um, you, you will have seen me on the channel for the last three years constantly, constantly pushing for and ramping for uh, some big goal, whether it's, you know, reaching a certain amount on our Patreon, whether it's getting YouTube monetization, whatever that is, uh, seeing that constant and consistent push, it can be difficult and it can be tiring. Um, but the reason that I've never given up, the reason that's always kept me motivated is knowing that I could always break it down into shorter goals, that I always had the support of my family and the friends, that I've always um, kept to that main big, um, big idea of why I started and having to remind myself of that um, all to kind of, and, and, even, um, and even being open to change and understanding that everything isn't going to work out the way that I want it to, um, all of that really, really helps to kind of cleanse that stressful feeling and to really help you to feel like you can maintain for the long run because that's that's what ultimately I see in a lot of uh, newer micronations and a lot of micronations that are really, really ambitious. Um, they all push really, really hard for this one thing and then they end up um, dropping out or they end up you know, changing course entirely and they change their branding 30 times and they do all these things because they feel like the initial thing they did wasn't working. And I want to change that narrative entirely. It's not that what you're doing isn't working. It's not that what you're doing isn't interesting or creative or exciting or whatever. It's that you have to keep pushing forward. Um, and you have to find a way to be comfortable in yourself pushing forward regardless of success, regardless of what you're seeing from other people and their feedback. Um, so first off, I want to say Republican Vistin, thank you. I see that you said you sent me an email. Uh, I will reply to that. Have you seen our reply to your email? Because I know a while ago you sent us your um, your information for the um, uh, micronational uh, ethics, uh, the rules for micronational ethics. And so I wanted to tell you that we did. Go ahead and put your uh, your name and your country up there, I believe. Um, if that, hmm. That might not have been you. That might not have been you. Um, but I thought it was. I, I, I'm going to have to go back. It was either that or the micronational map. Um, let me let me go back and double check. I will get back to your email, Vista, and I appreciate it. Um, I know we have talked a number of times, uh, you and I, about trying to get some work done. So I want to make sure that I go back and hit that. Uh, Retro Films and History says, good morning. Good morning, Retro Films and History. How have you been today? I hope you're doing well. And Olav jumped in. Uh, the government of Olav says, uh, greetings, Zipper AP. Greetings, uh, representatives of Olav. We really appreciate having you here. And I personally appreciate having you here on this lovely day. Um, again, sitting out by the pool in the morning, nice relaxing uh, way to start a stream, and also a great time to talk about mental health and micronationalism. You hear the birds chirping? Uh, it's, it's pretty today. I enjoy it, and I'm excited to talk about a topic that's once again hard. I, I don't think this is going to be the most popular topic in micronationalism, but if you know anybody that's stressing, if you know anybody that's having a, a lot of difficulty in this community or who feels like they've lost the fun in it, please, please encourage them to watch this video and to talk to other people about their mental health. Uh, to talk to people about just how they feel things are going because uh, mental health has a lot of stigma around it and I, I feel like it's important to discuss that. Uh, so we've gotten all the way to five. We're halfway through our list. 
where we're talking about setting reasonable goals. I think that's super, super important. If you don't set reasonable goals, you're always going to feel like you're falling short and you're always going to feel discouraged by what you're doing, even if you're achieving success. There will be plenty of people who are going, oh, I'm not, oh, I'm not, uh, I, I don't have this many subscribers. I don't have this many followers on TikTok. I don't have this or that or whatever. Uh, I don't have enough citizens. I don't have land. I don't have whatever. Uh, and they will get so down on themselves and beat themselves up so much that they rebrand their nation, that they, you know, get upset at the community and lash out at people, that they start to become somebody that they don't like. And so instead of doing all that, or eventually just stop doing it all together and feel like this wasn't the right thing for me, um, if micronationalism isn't the right thing for you and you, you realize that one day, definitely go and pursue something that you have fun with, most importantly. But for most people, I don't think it's that at all. I think it's actually just an overwhelming amount of stress that gets to them because they feel like they're not reaching that success. So the more that we can encourage people to open up and talk about this and to have a dialogue about how they're feeling day to day, even as like our national leaders, even as people who are supposed to be all knowing and all powerful and super strong and, and, and super wise and strategizing, it, it's important for us to talk about this. And it's important for us to be there for other people as a community um, and encourage them to go and reach out to their friends and family. Uh, we have four viewers and three likes. Thank you guys for uh, the encouragement and the continued liking. Um, again, I, I know that this isn't a topic that everybody's going to be interested in, but I do know that those three people who like do appreciate that. And, and this is what I'm here for is not for everybody, but for those people who need this. So I, I appreciate that. Um, and, and I want to continue. I see everybody's comments and I want to continue, uh, talking to you guys and answering your comments. But if you have any comments about this topic in particular, please let me know because I do want to, um, I do want to, uh, really, really focus in on mental health. And, and if anybody has any questions or if anybody wants to talk about anything, please let me know. Um, Retro said, I had my last day of school yesterday. Congrats. Uh, they said, I'm just waiting till graduation. Hey, May 20th graduation. Look out. I believe in you. That's a huge accomplishment right there. And that's something to celebrate. Um, they said, also, your backyard view is pretty amazing. Not going to lie. I appreciate it. This actually isn't even my backyard. Uh, these are the people that we're staying with right now. Uh, this is, you know, um, some, uh, 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 some people that I'm close with, but I, uh, this isn't my personal thing. I don't, I don't own any of this, uh, but I do appreciate it. Um, continuing on with that, uh, we talked about setting reasonable goals. Now I want to talk about remembering that everyone is small. Um, in micronationalism, we get really, really excited about pomp and pageantry. We really get excited about the concept that everyone is this king or queen or president or whatever, and that everybody has this really, really big weight and this really, really big responsibility and these many followers and this much support. We overinflate people a lot of the time, I feel like. And it's important to be respectful of micronational leaders because, of course, they are pushing for something really big, especially when they have a lot of accomplishments and stuff like that. It's really important to recognize them for that and to kind of give them credit where credit is due. So definitely don't undercut people and don't shortchange people and don't uh, make people feel like they're not important because they absolutely are. But on top of that, don't let that start to affect you. As a micronationalist, whether you're the leader of a micronation or whether you're just somebody else who's going through it uh, and trying to support another micronation, you really shouldn't try to put these people on too high a pedestal. Because in micronationalism especially, we're all small. Micronationalism is a very small niche. It's a very small group of people. And so knowing and understanding that everybody's struggling in the same way, that everybody's trying to push for larger things, and that nobody's really above anybody else or is really, you know, uh, all that special is important to think about. A lot of time we get rejection in the micronational community. We'll reach out to a group and they won't hit us back, or uh, we will try to uh, build something and it won't work out. We will you know, maybe even get insulted by somebody. Uh, recently we were insulted by Samaria and we were, you know, uh, we were condemned. Uh, and so for all of those purposes, it's important 
to think about and to remember that everybody is is trying for the same thing and that we really shouldn't be too too caught up in um you know feeling like there are um, great injustices done to us by other micronational leaders or we really shouldn't feel like there are you know uh this huge huge weight on name and importance and you know uh, status in the micronational community because of course we hold those things as important and we we, those are some of the core tenets of micronationalism to the extent that everybody seems to follow them. But I don't know that they're necessarily the right ones. Um, th that's part of the reason why I created the Rules for Ethical Micronationalism. Uh, and also, the other reason that I feel like I'm, I'm making this video is because of the idea that, you know, we are all people. We're all trying to make homes for ourselves, make success in the way that we want to, change the world in the way that we see fit. And so we should all be supporting each other. And we should all know that at the end of the day, before they started their country, before they had their support, before whatever, those people are just another person, just like you, who was looking across from a, uh, a screen online or was, uh, you know, walking around their neighborhood and said, hey, I want to do something different. Um, and so we should really try to connect on that personal level and that human level, um, along with trying to connect as micronational leaders with all the pomp and pageantry and respect that comes along with that. Um, and so again, if, if you guys are feeling this, if you guys are um, you know, enjoying this video and feeling like you're taking something from it, please give it a like and let's continue the conversation. I, I'm really trying to get this out to the people who are about to be like, oh, I'm quitting micronationalism and this is it and I, you know, everything's going wrong and everything's falling apart because everybody has those moments. Everybody uh, has hit some point in their micronational career where they felt like stress or, or problems and I'm like, ugh, ugh, I don't like this. This, this feels weird to me. It feels... Uh, like uh, uh, it feels like out of my comfort zone and so I think it's important to kind of calm people down and walk them back and say no no it's okay you're fine you just it, there are a few important things to think about and to keep true to yourself as you keep going in this because people do people lose their way people become entirely different people trying to start micronations and run countries and do all these different things and so I think it's important for us to keep some of these core tenets, um, especially remembering that everybody is small and kind of laughing about some of these things that we're dealing with. Um, number seven, uh, we're, we're seven out of ten on the list, we're getting close here, um, but number seven is I think one of the biggest ones that I can assert, especially for recently for myself, and that is take days off. Um, I have gone recently, uh, I'll share a personal anecdote, I've gone recently from graduating school uh, to being during the summer and every single semester, every single uh, summer that I've gotten and break and all of those things, I've gone from pushing so hard during the semester, trying to get the, the grades to pass and trying to move through my degree and then jumping straight into micronationalism and doing a ton, a ton, a ton for that and just trying to grind and trying to grind and trying to grind here and then throwing everything back into my school and trying to grind and trying to grind and trying to grind and then feeling like we weren't doing enough and we, we lost some people and we, we didn't get the, the watch time that we needed so then we jump back over here and we grind and we grind and we grind and we grind and, we grind. and that uh, can be so taxing on a person. I know for myself it was taxing and continues to be taxing, but that's a manageable thing. And I think for uh, a lot of people, they don't try to manage that. They don't try to work on it. They don't try to, you know, reevaluate the situation every once in a while. They just kind of drop off. They'll push themselves until they hit their brink and then they say, I can't do it anymore. And they, they fall out. So instead of doing that, we want to encourage people to. Uh, take days off. Uh, recently, I, uh, in fact, yesterday, and I'd love to share some footage of this that we took uh, yesterday, but uh, we had a pool day. That's, you know, you see there's stuff in the pool, you see there's a little salon and stuff. Uh, there's still some, uh, some different floaties and things in the pool because we just had a fun day. I said, you know what, I'm not going to push too hard. I'm not going to, you know, try and put out content today. I'm just going to focus on fun and just enjoying myself, 
celebrating the things that we've done so far, uh, spending time with family and friends, and feeling good about myself. And so I was really, really happy to get to do that, and it felt like a breath of, breath of fresh air, which is especially why I wanted to talk about this topic today. After you go so long in one particular mindset, feeling like, oh, I have to, I have to reach all these goals, and I have to do all these things, and I have to get everything all of a sudden, and then you take a breather, and you're just looking at nature, and you're just spending time with people, and you're laughing and joking, all of a sudden you go, man, all of this is, is big, but it's also just nice to, to be yourself and to feel like you don't have that weight for a second. Um, they say that uh, heavy is the head that wears the crown, and I feel like that's true on so many levels. Um, but again, that, that extends to all micronationals and not just micronational leaders. Being open to yourself and your friends and your family and knowing that you don't have to be constantly stressing or constantly pushing in order to be successful in micronationalism is a huge thing. Remember, we're all running our own race. It's not something that you have to be competing with everybody else. And this isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. And so, as you continue, you shouldn't be looking at what place you're in. You should be looking at uh, what where you are within your goals, how far you're trying to go, how much you have left, how, uh, how many different accomplishments you can break that up into um, so that it feels easier for you and that it feels good. So again, taking those days off, super important. Even the other day when I was doing stuff that wasn't even a day off, working on the land has felt like a day off for me because a lot of our work and our development in Eternia has been based around social media and has been based around trying to grow our presence online. Um, whether that's taking care of the Discord and updating stuff and making sure everybody's good, whether that's checking citizenship applications, keeping up with the micronational map, and the, um, and, uh, the uh, um, rules of micronational ethics, and all these different things, um, it, it can become uh, quite focused and quite centered on one big goal that you're trying to achieve, one big part of your community that uh, has been the central point of success or the central thing that you're trying to reach for. And ultimately, seeing that there are other things that we can do and still be growing and still be finding success is really cool. Uh, just being able to work out on the land, just being able to, you know, go and chop things up and, and hammer things and build things, and especially being around our citizens. Um, we had David visit the land the other day that I want to show you guys uh, a couple pictures from at some point. I'll uh, post them on our story and stuff or uh, on our Instagram and Twitter if you follow that. Uh, maybe even on our Reddit uh, that we're trying to grow up now. That all being the case, I was out there the other day with him and with Tiffany and it just made me feel happy to be able to do that, of course, as a micronational leader, of course, achieving this dream and, and feeling proud of the success that we have, but also just because it was fun. Because even if it weren't a micronational thing, I know I would still enjoy doing that, even if we were just helping somebody else to work on their land or doing whatever. It's nice. It feels nice to be able to laugh with people, to feel like you've done a, a hard day's work and to still feel like there's not that overwhelming, did we do enough, did we have enough, did we reach enough today? Um, it, it was really nice to just not have those thoughts and to be feeling calm, to be feeling um, secure in what we're doing. So I was really proud of us for what we did that day. Um, it, and a lot of it wasn't even uh, developing our, um, our main shelter. So this was one of the things that David and I talked about that day. Um, was we were uh, we were working on the sh uh, I had been telling him all about working on the shelter and you guys have seen us uh, in our videos working on our first dwelling we've been building on that we've been making a lot of progress on it but uh, the other day we drove out to the land and we don't have a driveway yet we don't have like a nice stable driveway so when you drive onto the land it's just pretty much like uh, you're driving off the road down into a ditch like a drainage ditch and then straight onto uh, just dirt and just, you know, kind of the area of the trees that we cleared a little bit. And so we drive Tiffany's, uh, Tiffany's vehicle out there, and all of a sudden, uh, we realize that we're stuck. We realize that 
when she tries to leave and to drive back out, that her wheels are spinning, that she's digging into the dirt, and that we have gotten her stuff. Um, the land is a little bit hilly, so there was a place where it was off balance, and three of her wheels were on the ground, but one of them wasn't, and that wasn't providing her enough traction to actually get back out. So we had to dig this driveway out uh, and flatten it and level it before she could actually get out of this stuck position that she was in. And that's what we spent most of the day doing was just this maintenance work of not even, you know, making something to further the dwelling, but just making something very practical and very short term beneficial that was just trying to smooth and level this driveway. Um, we still don't have rocks out there yet. We still don't have stuff to actually make it a nice permanent driveway. Um, we really need some chert and stuff out there. We're going to have to buy some of those materials. But just actually, like, with shovels, with a pickaxe, just clearing and flattening and smoothing this dirt out, cutting little trees and tree limbs and stuff to make more space, it was nice. And I talked to David about that. And when I was doing it, I was, like, apologizing profusely because I was like, I feel like he came out here to work on the shelter. I feel like he came out here to help uh, promote and progress the little, like, uh, this little, uh, this little, um, this little uh, camp that we're building, this, uh, this tribe, this community that we're building right here. And so I felt like that wasn't a part of it. And he reminded me, and it was, it was really nice. He was like, no, this is, this is really important. Uh, and I'm happy to be doing this with you. And it made me feel warm inside. It made me feel proud to be the emperor of Eternia and to have such a good friend as David and a good citizen because it was really something that was necessary and something that we need to continue to work on, even though it is just maintenance. And I feel like that is a great, great analog for mental health. That is a great um, thing that can be relatable for everyone because those goals, those grand ideas that you're pushing for, whether it's getting a thousand subscribers on YouTube or whether it's you know, um, getting so many Twitter followers, or whether it's trying to get this much money, or these many citizens, or uh, be around for this long, or whatever it is, at the end of the day, there's plenty of maintenance stuff that you have to do that isn't going to get you a lot of hype, it isn't going to get you a lot of clout, it's not going to be something that people are super excited to see as content, it's just work, it's just something that you have to do to maintain things and to make yourself feel good. And mental health is exactly that in a nutshell. You have to work on who you are and what you're doing before you can try and take on this huge weighty task of running a community, of trying to get support from people, of trying to achieve different successes for your people. At the end of the day, being a micronationalist, you should not separate that from yourself. I don't think, you know, as we, as we talked about uh, in taking a day off, that doesn't mean shirking off your community and saying, today I'm not an Eternian. Don't do that because who you are and what your community is should be a part of you if you're really trying to embrace that and you're serious about what you're doing. But at the same time, you need to find a way to live within that comfortably. And so I think that's also a lot of the agitation and the difficulty that people have in developing a micronation and talking to other people about it, I feel like that's all connected because if you feel like this is something that's a, a, an act or a stage that you're putting on and that you're separate from that, that there's a, a micronational you and then there's an everyday you, that doesn't feel genuine. You, you need to be genuine about it. You need to embrace it to some extent. So everyone can do their own thing and find what makes them happy and comfortable first and foremost. But in my way of doing things and in the things that I have seen work for myself, accepting and embracing micronationalism as a part of my everyday and Eternia as a part of who I am as a person. I am an Eternian when I, when I speak about that. This is a part of my culture. This is a part of my life. Even yesterday when I was joking around with Tiffany's family and stuff in the pool, the pool was freezing. It was cold in there. And I was trying to get in and I was trying to like warm up a little bit and I was cold and everybody was like, ah, come in, come on, come on. And I was getting in the pool and I was, I was shivering a little bit. And 
uh, Tiffany's family was making the joke, oh, well, I guess we know uh, Antonio is in a winter nation and stuff like that, and they were picking on me uh, because I was real cold and I was shaking. Uh, and so I was, I was laughing back and, uh, and making a joke and be like, we should be a desert. It should be a desert. Um, because I was just, uh, it felt nice though. It felt nice, one, to, to get acknowledgement for that uh, and to know that there are other people who are starting to accept me uh, in my own personal life, friends, family, uh, as a tournament and that to be a culture of mine, that to be an identity of mine, uh, but also uh, to, uh, to be able to have that moment of break where I'm still in it, I'm still active, I'm still an attorney, and I'm not shutting that off or hiding it away or putting it in a box, but I am able to say I'm not in work mode, I'm not in grind mode, I'm not handing out pamphlets trying to convince everybody of what I am. I am able to passively be who I am. And so that, I feel like, was a real key difference. It's something that opened my eyes just recently. All of these other things on the list are things that I've kind of known about for a while and that have kind of built up over the, uh, over the course of time, but taking days off and doing that the right way, taking days off in a way that uh, doesn't feel like work in and of itself, doesn't feel like you're going to have to do all this catch up or doesn't feel like you're sacrificing in any way, is something that I really took to heart recently and something that made me feel really good. And so we're lounging by the pool this morning talking about that topic and talking about why that's so important and why it was so important for me. I feel like as we continue to go on in micronationalism and in attorney's development and in the life of this channel, I want you all to be able to see my experience and my personal uh, life view firsthand. So when I'm experiencing a failure, you guys are going to see that. When I'm experiencing hardship, you guys are going to see that. And when I'm realizing, oh, duh, I should have been doing this thing all along, I want to pass it on to you guys because I hope that it helps one person. I hope that it allows somebody to feel like, wow, I'm really, I'm, I, I really connect with that. I really see uh, myself in that. And that's that's what I've always wanted. That's what I wish people would have been talking about more is mental health and, and uh, trying to to really embrace and, and explain to the community that it's not just you out there. It's not that this isn't stressful for everybody else because it absolutely is. Um, going forward with that, number eight is celebrate accomplishments. So that seems like an obvious thing. When we as micronationalists uh, create social media posts and uh, go and talk to people about our micronations and stuff like that, we're really quick to start bringing up the things that define value for us. And we've talked about that in previous videos a lot, whether it's our micronational economic series, whether it's our culture series, whatever it is, talking about the history of your nation and the, the accomplishments that it has um, has always been a really important part of people just doing micronationalism naturally. But I think that there's a key here. Celebrating your accomplishments doesn't necessarily mean bragging about them or going out of your way to show them off. It means personally, internally, feeling good about something that you did, even if it's not this huge groundbreaking thing, just a daily accomplishment. Hey, I, I did something that I've been, you know, uh, stressing about for a while and I finally completed it now I can take a breather or um, I you know haven't uh, been putting enough time in that I really wanted to put so now I'm able to put more time in and that feels good even just looking back and feeling like um, you know look at how far we've come type of thing is really really crucial and really helps to solidify for me especially uh, what I have achieved and what Eternia has achieved and why we are doing this. Um, I've always said Eternia forever. This is something that I'm not stopping with, that I'm not slowing down with. But even me, I, I feel like uh, I still struggle with trying to remember sometimes, hey, it's okay, you know, you, you calm down and you try to uh, look back at, instead of saying, I'm not doing enough, or I'm not achieving enough, or attorney is not doing enough, you say, look at all we've accomplished. We have this many subscribers, we have this much support, we have these many uh, community members and citizens who are actively feeling benefited and feeling happy because we are who we are. 
even you guys hanging out in the comments and just talking to us if this is something enjoyable for you if this helps you in any way that's a huge accomplishment for me that i can sit outside by the pool and have fun with you guys and talk and enjoy stuff and express stuff that's been difficult for me and that you know really is is being a little bit vulnerable for me and that it, it benefits somebody and that it helps somebody it makes somebody feel good about themselves that means the world to me and that's an accomplishment for me that i can take for the rest of my day and week and month and feel like i can add to that list of, of feel good items things that help me to push forward and keep me motivated and keep me happy uh, to continue pushing forward for you guys um so yeah let me see uh, ooh, somebody said, uh, hello from Australia as well. Uh, thanks, local peanut butter. I'm glad to see that you're from Australia. Uh, as well, Maximo, good to see you. Uh, Republic of Mid-North official, uh, good to see you guys. Uh, sorry I didn't jump in and recognize your comments right away, but it does mean a lot uh, that you guys are supporting us, especially from Australia. I imagine in Australia the time zone's much different. It may be the afternoon or night there, uh, but for us it's early morning. So I appreciate you guys hanging out and uh, talking to us about mental health and talking to us about micro-nationalism, um, teaching us some stuff. Um, your local peanut butter said, been considering starting a micro-nation since I was nine in 2013. Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, how have you felt about it thus far? Have you actually started one? Have you felt like you're trying to figure something out or get to something before you do? Uh, that's crazy. Um, Um, Retro Film says, do you think direct democracy or indirect democracy is better for a micronation that decides to have democratic elections or voting on, um, things in their nation? I will talk about that in another video. I'll add that to the topic list, because that is important. Um, I have some topics on, you know, the intricacies of, of, uh, of, um, democracies because we we've, we've talked about the democracies in general are hard for micro nations but i haven't really gone into too many of the details as to why we've described a little bit about it but i also haven't gone into types of democracies and specifically focusing on them so i would love to do that um maximo says i don't know what to do with a micro nation the most it can be is online or in my room you know i get that um and i will say being online isn't a bad thing at all um Eternia has pretty much started out online. I wouldn't say 100% because, again, I've always been a part of Eternia and I've always been carrying Eternia on in my own life and to the people that I know and talking to them about it, but I can definitely, definitely understand that sentiment and I would say that you're not alone in that. There are many, many micronations, even very successful and famous micronations. Uh, Christina of Psycholia, her micronation is pretty much 100% online. Um, Malasia. Malasia, even though it has a lot of physical land, even though it gets tourists and stuff like that, the primary way that people know about Malasia is online. Being an online micronation is 100% fine. Uh, and there, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, uh, Republic of Midnorth says, I made one. Congratulations. Uh, your local peanut uh, dealer says, uh, um, Ooh, your local peanut butter says, Attorney, you should make a video stating who shouldn't make a micronation, honestly. There are some people who just shouldn't. Um, uh, that's what's preventing me from creating one. Um, I used to be into the idea of it 10 or 12 years old. So I would say this as well. I think that's a personal thing, right? Nobody can tell you, you shouldn't make a micronation, because it's up to you. It is your own independence. It's your own idea of what you want to pursue in life. Nobody should tell you whether or not you were cut out for something in life, because in pursuing my physics degree, people told me in high school and in elementary school and middle school and stuff, you're not math inclined. You shouldn't, you shouldn't pursue stuff like that. You're going too hard on it. But no, I, I graduated with a bachelor's in physics. It is possible for you to do things that you may not be, uh, that may not be the easiest for you, that you may struggle with more than other people. So no, there isn't a specific type of person who should or shouldn't make a micronation. But I will say this, 
less people should make micronations. More people should help and assist and join other micronations because that's the only way that we can gain power as micronation is by micronations, is by collectivizing, by coming together and by continuing to assist each other uh, more than just recognizing each other as other micronational leaders. That's a whole different topic and we'll get into that in another day. But real quick, I want to go for the last two. We were on number eight, celebrate accomplishments. Remember to celebrate your own accomplishments, not to brag about them on social media, but just to yourself, to give yourself a pat on the back, to wake up in the morning and say, I did a good job today. I did a good job this week. I did a good job this month. And I did a good job this year. And think about those things. Goes right into number nine. Slides straight into the DMs of number nine. And that is do regular self-check. Um, self checkups super important for mental health in general knowing that you're you know kind of staying on the right track that you feel like you're being yourself and being true to yourself but also um doing regular self check-ins to make sure that you are staying with those ideas and those primary things that you wanted to to do in micronational again this kind of goes back to number one uh where you remember where you started but even more so than that, you're actually checking in regularly to say, you know, am I feeling good? Is this something that's enjoyable for me? Is this something that I feel like I'm where I want to be at? If not, why not? Uh, do I feel like, you know, I'm supported by my friends and family on this? If not, why not? Um, learn about yourself. Learn about the things that make you upset in this. Learn about the things that make you happy in this learn about your own mental state and your own uh, ability to check in with yourself. The more that you think about thinking, the more that you have metacognition is what they call it, um, the more that you try to learn about what it is that you are doing in the world and why it is that you are thinking the way that you are thinking can help a ton with mental health, especially in micronationalism, because we're so worried about running these structures and keeping everything up and making sure that, you know, we're doing well enough and we're succeeding enough and we're competing enough that if we are able to check in with ourselves and just say, hey, but am I doing okay? Am I feeling good today? Am I enjoying what I'm doing? That is where the game changes. That's where you can really continue to be consistent and motivate yourself beyond just what it is that you're doing. Eternia for myself is about survival of my family. It is about making a positive economic situation for people who may not have one. I didn't grow up in a great economic situation, and that being the case, I want to make sure that I can take care of my father in his old age. I want to make sure that I can take care of my family and Tiffany, uh, even though I know she can more than capably take care of herself, and uh, she has shown that time and time again. But I want to make sure that I can achieve something and do so in a way that represents the importance of why I started this in the first place. So doing those regular self check-ins for me and saying, you know, do you feel accomplished in this? Did that land actually give you what you wanted? And in my in my opinion, I feel like yes, it's given us a home. It's given us the place to start out. Um, has making these YouTube uh, uh, videos been beneficial? Uh, yes, 100%. It has given me uh, people to connect with and reach out with in the community who understand what I'm going through and who I can express my opinions and my interests to and who I can learn from. You guys are a wonderful sounding board. And the same thing with my friends and family where I can bring up, hey, this is what I'm doing and this is what I feel like is the best way to go. And sometimes people will say, oh yeah, I didn't think about that. That's awesome. And sometimes people will say, well, why are you doing that? Well, What's the point in doing that? And then we have these great discussions and these debates about it. So all of this has been super beneficial for me. And those are things that I run through with my check-ins daily. And I, I try to just feel good about it. Um, because ultimately, that's what micronationalism is. It should be something enjoyable. It should be something that you feel like you're gaining a lot from. Uh, and so we really should try to spread this message out to people who may not be getting it. Especially on Twitter, I have seen a ton, a ton of people on Twitter, on the Reddit, say like, hey, I joined my, I started my micronation. Oh, this is getting crazy. Oh, there's a lot of drama. Oh, I'm dropping out and I can't do it anymore. And I feel like a big part of that are these self check-ins, uh, are remembering, you know, why you did this. And ultimately, all summarizing in mental health. Making sure that you keep your mental health good. Um, the final one.
that I want to talk about before we get going. Uh, this is already an hour video, but I feel like it, it, we do like three hour live streams. If this is an hour live stream that is packed full of content that really helps somebody and that really makes somebody feel good about the situation that they are in, that's all I want. I want one or two people to take away from this, wow, I, I've been thinking about this wrong. Wow, I you know, really need to start doing these things more in my life. Wow, I really uh, feel better about knowing that I'm not alone in some of these struggles or some of these difficulties. Um, because having you guys here for me, uh, that helps me, you know, and that, that helps me to, uh, to learn about that. So, uh, hold up, my, uh, my phone is overheating because I have it sitting in the sun. So I'm going to set, we're, we're going to shift a little bit. We're going to shift our view here. I'm going to walk around, walk around, walk around to over here. See if I can't prop up and reset us, and then we will do our last, last one. The big reveal. Okay. We've changed spots a little bit. My phone's a little more cool, a little more happy with me. And we're going to jump into the final of our 10 recommendations for micronational health. Uh, specifically, micronational mental health. Um, number 10 is mental health over making it. Um, and I, I think that's something, again, that is super, super crucial. Um, I have seen a lot of people struggle with difficulties. I've seen other my... Oh, goodness. Sorry about that, everybody. Okay. Uh, yep. Uh, sorry about the live stream lag. Um, this was something that uh, actually just happened. Uh, my phone jumped in and said, It's overheating. We got to shut everything down. And it, it did. It immediately just dropped all of my apps. Uh, which probably was a bad idea. I had my phone sitting in the sun. All of my apps were like draining the phone uh, and hitting it at the same time. So I'm sorry that everything was happening there. Uh, I hope everybody's good. I hope everything's back on track. Uh, it says for me that the video reset, like it's at 1 minute 46 seconds now, but I imagine that's just going to look like a cut to everybody else. So it'll probably be like video, 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 buffering, 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 cut, start back. Um, but yeah, I, I appreciate it. Uh, Retro said it's still loading. Maximo says refresh Retro. I appreciate it. Before my phone starts overheating again and closing out, I do want to cover this last topic, which is mental health over making it. Uh, and I just wanted to say it's super, super important for us to remember that um, uh, absolutely. We should be focusing on uh, remembering that... Uh, our well-being, our, our health and well-being, is much more important than our external goals. Uh, of course, we want to achieve. Of course, that's a part of, uh, you know, being who we are, pursuing the things that we love is a part of being happy and a part of having good mental health as a person. But at the same time, we have to remember kind of the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know, you have to eat, you have to have shelter, you have to... Um, uh, be around people that you love and care about and then you can have those aspirations and then you can have you know social accomplishments and achievements and things like that um, and you know personal goals and stuff making sure that you have your mental health in order is above and always will be above uh, having your micronation and running your micronation so um, you, you can't really help other people if, help other people if you can't help yourself so that's something that's important. Again, I have seen other micronationalists come to me and talk to me about this. Like, hey, I'm thinking of quitting my micronation. I'm thinking of shutting everything down because I just, I can't do it anymore. It's too much. Um, and I, I really, really feel disappointed in that. But I know that it is important for them to do so. Um, you, you should never be compromising your mental health over uh, trying to preserve your country. Um, and I, I've seen that happen. Uh, to other people as well, where they will just continue to push until they hit a breaking point. Uh, and so we're trying to, in all of these rules and in all of these, not even rules, just suggestions, try to try to limit that and negate that as much as possible. But if you get all the way through these 10, 10 ideas and none of them help at all, and you, you're still feeling super overwhelmed, you're still feeling like it's too much, um, always remember you should... Uh, you should choose your mental health over trying to create a micronation any and every day. There are other things that can make you happy in life. There are other things that can help you to build success and to feel happy. And you can always bring your day back. 
Uh, you can always bring your life back into, I said day because Francisco just asked me how my day was. I appreciate it, Francisco. I'm about to hit it up. You got me in a slip real quick. So I want to I finish this out. Um, uh, also, if you guys like the video, it means a lot. We got six viewers, five likes. We're trying to hit that, that, hit that balance like ratio. Uh, but that being the case, when you, uh, when you divert away from micronationalism, if you have to, and you work on yourself and focus on yourself, you can always come back. And that's something that I've seen online a lot recently as well. Uh, it's been super, super cool to see plenty of micronationalists going like, I left, and now here's the great return. And even though I feel like that's bad for your branding, and I feel like it isn't the best thing to do micronationally, it is an important part of people's life and their journey as an individual trying to figure things out and trying to make sure that they personally are good. So that's a huge one and that's something that I feel like can be really, really beneficial to people. Focus on you, make yourself happy, enjoy your life, and then help to create this community that you love from the positivity that you can bring to it. People want to know your ideas. People want to hear from you. People want to see the great things that you can accomplish with the talents that you have as a unique ass individual. But that all being the case, you have to be good first. You have to make sure that you're happy and healthy and taken care of before you can provide anybody else with that. Otherwise, you may be steering people the wrong direction or you may not be able to be as consistent as they may need you to be. So uh, that all being the case, really, really focus in on what you can do, how you can make yourself happy, uh, and how you can check in with yourself as a micronationalist to make sure that you're doing good in, in everything that you're trying to do. Um, I'm going to read some comments and then I think we're going to head out because I, I really wanted to make this a fairly concise stream, something that people could enjoy, people could come in and watch, and that they could feel like um, they, they got something beneficial out of. So uh, with our swan in the background floating along, uh, please let me know what you guys are thinking and feeling. Uh, if you have any stories you want to share, even if it's not public, if you want to message me on Discord, if you want to reach out via email, whatever it is, please let me know because this is a huge topic. Not a lot of people are going to talk about it. This video is going to get passed up, I am certain, by most micronationalists. People, it's going to go to the bottom of the, uh, of the, um, of the um, search results. But at the same time, please get it out there for people. If you feel like you see anybody struggling, if you feel like you see anybody who, who looks overwhelmed, who, you know, feels like it, everything's getting crazy, please remember this video and please send it to them because they are not alone. Everybody in micronationalism, whether you're the leader of a nation, whether you're the most famous nation, whether you're the least famous nation, whether you're just starting out, whether you've been here for decades, Everybody deals with stress, everybody deals with mental health stuff, and we need to keep talking about it as a community. I appreciate you guys. Um, so everybody was talking about it loading. I'm going to go back to some of the previous ones just so that I can make sure everybody's good. Uh, United Kingdom of New England says, good evening. Good evening. How are you? Uh, it's morning for us, but I imagine, again, in, uh, in Australia, for our Australian viewers, it is uh, evening. I say Australia because few previous people said Australia is where they're from, and uh, I know uh, New England, the United Kingdom of New England is from uh, Australia as well. Um, Olaf says, apologies for the disturbance, but did Emperor AP respond to our greeting? I sure did. Uh, it's good to see you, uh, Olaf, but I will say it again. Uh, I am glad to, uh, to have you as a part of our stream. Max said good morning. I didn't see Max, though. I missed Max 100%. Good morning, Max. Good morning, Lazix. I appreciate everybody. Um, uh, your local peanut butter says, uh, ooh, hold up. Oh my gosh, there's so many people who made good comments and I didn't even get to see them. Uh, six years, Pog, absolutely, I appreciate it. Um, uh, Onyx said hi. Hey, Onyx, it's good to see you. Um... Uh, Onyx says, I like my new profile pic. I like it too, and I like the art you shared with us. I want to share that on our Instagram in the next day or two, uh, and maybe on the Reddit. Uh, Maximo says, I don't know what to do with a micronation. Uh, yep, online or in my room. Um, uh, Olaf says, did AP respond to our greeting? We were uh, inactive. I sure did, and I hope you're doing well, Olaf. 
Um, your local peanut dealer says, whatever micronation I create is going to be cursed, especially if I base it off myself and individual cultural identity. Um, I don't know that that's necessarily the case. Uh, as long as you're accepting of people, as long as you are having a positive outlook on life and you're legitimately trying to make an inclusive community, I don't think that'll be the case at all. Maximo says, when I was a kid, I had a website and put city names on each room and gave, uh, each room and gave my family citizenship. And once my siblings and I sung the anthem, good times. See, that's fun and that's enjoyable. And that's something that people can get behind. I don't think you should belittle that in any way. That's awesome. Retro Films and History says, you can have uh, one online and create a community. It's perfectly acceptable to not have any land as long as your citizens contribute to the nation in their own respective right. Absolutely. And what that means, what that contribution means can be a whole gamut of things from people who just like your videos or who follow you on discord and who are a part of your thing and talk to you or whatever uh online friends or that can be like really serious jobs and work and all this stuff uh people assigned tasks it, it's all on what you want to do uh mid north says exactly mine right now is just a small community and that's perfectly fine Vistin says there are actually two types of micronations and that's another topic we're going to talk about soon uh, if you guys are interested in that topic in particular, like growth in micronationalism and the size of micronations and what's important about that, we actually got recommended that the other day as well, so that's going to be another live stream coming up. Uh, Vistern says there are actually two types of micronations. There are people who take it a little bit seriously and the ones who take it absolutely seriously. And I agree with that, but I would say, you know, there are plenty of micronations who are fantasy. Uh, and, you know, that's why we defined realist versus fantasy. And if you haven't seen that video, I recommend you check it out. Uh, realist versus fantasy micronations. We talked about that uh, maybe a year or two ago on the channel. And that's the idea, is that, you know, there are plenty of people who are not trying to, you know, declare independence and do all these things and, you know, seek recognition from the uh, micronational community and the international community. They are just trying to have fun with it, uh, creating things in their bedroom, doing stuff like that. Don't worry about that at all. And there are plenty of micronations who start out in people's bedrooms who are serious about doing that and who are realists, and that's fine too. But show films of history says even if it's as small as voting on decisions to manufacture stuff, any particular, any participation is healthy for any community. Agreed. Uh, Mid North says my community has like two members. Uh, that's cool. Uh, Retro says beside you or are you one of the two? Either way, I, I respect it. Your local peanut dealer says I should work on my website once I'm done with my exams. Uh, you sure can, but ultimately do you uh, enjoy yourself? And I would say um, try to try to look at. Um, uh, try to look at other micronations if you can. If you haven't started a micronation already, look at other ones because almost every idea for micronationalism has already been created, has already been developed in some way. And if you're just creating some shoot off of that, it's better to support another micronation and make a small change in that one that fits it better to what you're interested in rather than trying to uh, create uh, a whole other micronation to do something that's so similar. Um, uh, Republic of Minor says, a little bit seriously for me, but I'm going to become more serious. I believe in you. Maximo says, I deleted Instagram and Twitter. Maximo, what happened? Uh, that may be a good, a good mental health choice, actually. But uh, that, uh, good for you. Social media can sometimes be rough, but uh, I'm curious as to why you decided personally to delete Instagram and Twitter. Vlasic says, hello. Hey, everybody joined in. Um, Retro says, how far are you in your nation, Mid-North? Uh, Mid-North says, we have a micro-wiki in order to fly online, too. Uh, Retro says, what are your goals? Uh, Mid-North says, fairly new. Olav says, apologies, did uh, they respond to our greeting? We sure did. Uh, Mid-North says, get land, 100 plus citizens become self-reliant. And see those big, big goals. Start small. Start creating small, short-term goals. Get three citizens, you know. Uh, get one citizen, um, get, you know, uh, a little bit of online support, something like that, and that's, that's fine. Uh, Olaf says, didn't get to watch the full video. Uh, Maximo says, yes, he did, Olaf. Olaf said, oh, um, Diamond Coin said, hello, hey, Diamond Coin, uh, you seem new. If you're not new, welcome back. If you are new, good to see you, and thank you for joining us. Um, Maximo said, happiness, and then stars in the eyes, um, Midnor says, in South Australia, the time is 11.41 p.m. Ooh, very cool. Uh, Maximus is almost 12 in Australia. LOL, the Samsung sound is funny to me because the memes to 2000, 
2022 humor, of course. Uh, Pistachio Chicken says, damn, I forgot about Micronations. Well, welcome back to the community of nations. Uh, we're here, we're hanging out, and we're, we're continuing to push every single day. Um, uh, you may have forgotten about us, but we haven't forgotten about you. Um, Maximo says, might revive my nation almost a decade old now, but government's not so stable. I believe in you. Um, but like I said, uh, a lot of the time people want to create their own nations and recreate their nations and bring back their nations. I think you should look at joining other nations before you do. Uh, but that's just me. Um, ooh, Francisco said, shalom from Yara. Good to see you, Yara. Retro says, how hot are the summers in Alabama? Because I've lived in Florida most of my childhood to teenage years and it was unbearable in summer. Uh, I lived in Louisiana and now Alabama, so very similar. Um, and in Florida, I've lived in Florida before. Um, it's good, it's good. Um, I'm in North Alabama, so it's not as bad as South Alabama. I've lived in South Alabama as well. Um, it's hot, it's you know probably uh, in the 80s or 90s today. Uh, so it's it's pretty warm, but it's nice, uh, especially early in the morning. It's not too bad. Max uh, Maximo says thanks for the stream uh, and great points, Emperor. Thank you so much. Uh, Maximo says uh, this stream is at the top for me. I watched it all. Hey, thank you so much, Maximo. That that legitimately warms my heart. That even if one person got it, like you said, Maximo, if this helped you, if you enjoyed it, that's what this was for, and I'm thankful for that. I feel lucky to have had the platform to get to you and to be able to have this connection. Thank you for reaching out. I know we're not a huge channel, so watching our streams, participating, means a ton to us and also helps our watch time. Um, Maximo says, occasionally re-downloaded re Instagram for some stuff, but I just deleted it because I wasn't using them much anyway. That's fair. Why waste time on social media when you have more fun stuff to do, especially if it's not beneficial to you? Um, I appreciate you all. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us, and I will see you all soon. Today, I have some updates. I'm going to be doing some stuff. I'm going to pick up stuff for the nation. Uh, I will probably be posting videos and pictures of that, along with stuff that I've been doing over the last month that I haven't been able to post videos and pictures of that we need to start with. So, thank you all so much. I will see you soon. Peace, everybody. Have a good day. Have a good night, wherever you are. See you.